Hi, um, so I'm doing a tutorial video for how I did that sketch of the kind of witchy girl that I drew last night. So this is in, it's not quite real time, it's sped up about twice the speed um, because real time is about two hours long. Um, so this is probably going to be about an hour long. So as you can see, I'm using Procreate, an iPad, and I am, after getting my reference image, I just found a little cute picture online. I kind of save pictures online um, when I get the chance. If I just see something that catches my eye, I'll keep it and think, ooh, I could turn that into a, a tattoo or a cool drawing or something. Um, and I do lots of like, portraity stuff because I think it looks cool. So I'm using a red, a medium uh, airbrush pen on Procreate and I did a kind of a kind of a grey background I just like having a kind of a grey background as opposed to a white background and I'm using a red pencil colour a red colour because I just think it looks nice and I'm so used to using different colours that it's nice to have a Change it up a small bit. Um, so I'm just putting in the lines here, as you can see. Not quite real time, but fairly sped up. Um, I might speed up or just skip forward a small bit in certain parts of this video, so you're not going to be waiting forever just to see me drawing in absolutely everything. Um, I'm literally just trying to copy it fairly accurately. I know I'm gonna change it, I'm not trying to do an absolutely perfect recreation, although I'm trying to do a fairly accurate representation of what's there. Um, I'm gonna adjust it then and make it into something else. Um, but I'll use most of it. Okay, so you can see that I skip forward just a little bit there just to kind of move it on a small bit. Um, so I'm drawing in the hat now. Um, usually when I'm drawing things, I kind of try and use different things as markers, like where does the bottom of the ear correspond with the bottom of the eye or the bottom of the nose, and same with the hat, like where is it in relation to other parts of the, the image. Like, as you can see, the bottom of her ear is kind of parallel with the bottom of where the hat starts. Things like that I just use as markers, just rough markers, just to get a guide. And you can see there now I'm changing, I'm turning it into a witch's hat. Um, because I thought it should make a cute little witch. Um, yeah, I'm just sketching away there now. I'm trying to see you now what I'm doing here. I must have taken a break maybe for a second. Oh yeah, I'm zooming in and just detailing a little bit more. The good thing about this screen recorder is you can really see what I'm actually doing properly. When you watch one of those time-lapse videos, it doesn't show the screen kind of zooming in and zooming out and turning around and stuff. It's another good thing about Procreate is you can twist the image as you see fit. I'm putting in a little belt buckle or hat buckle, I suppose you call it, for the witch's hat. I've had lived very little of this really. Changing the theme of it and making her into a little bit of a witch. I usually do this kind of stuff just for fun and, and kind of watch TV while I'm drawing. TV on in the background. It's just kind of therapeutic. Just putting in suggestions of hair, just shapes. This is all just sketchy stuff just to lay down my groundwork and I think that's gonna finish it off the kind of smoky effect. That's more out of laziness really so they don't have to draw hands or anything like that. I just decided I'll give it a a smoky border. Going into more detail now. Switching to black. I think I forgot to put a layer. You'll see me now I'll change to a new layer. Layers are like they're basically invisible different visible layers that you put over whatever image you're doing so you can 
say like concentrate just on the eyes or you can have a background layer and a foreground layer and it's very handy you'll see a bit more as, as it goes on how layers work but they're really handy I'm kind of going over and back now just to look reference wise at the image and not trying to be super detailed but just blocking in things kind of come back into it after make it a bit more detailed see soon where I figure out that I've done the wrong layer I think you know how long it took me to realize that sometimes you have a tendency to kind of draw something without actually looking at what you're drawing and just imagining what it looks like instead of actually looking at what it looks like actually looking at the shape of something sometimes we just kind of picture it in our mind's eye instead of really observing what you're meant to be copying. I'm just making sure on an airbrush I've made it big bigger now because I'm gonna block in some blacks. Maybe I did change my layer. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not coronavirus. So I can, here I am just blocking in. I might just speed up some of this there now, if I can do that. Okay, so I just skip forward a small bit. So you can see me, I've blocked in a nice bit of the hat there now. And you're gonna see, coming up there now in a sec, you'll see some the layers that I'm using. See, there's layer one, two, and three. Layer three is I'm going to block in the black stuff. Layer two then is the, the red sketch. And then you've got background layer as well, which is the grey in the background. That's going to become a new colour and I'm putting in a new layer. And I've, I've put that layer underneath the black layer, it's behind it for kind of a brown colour in the hat, brown grey kind of colour in the hat, for the kind of brim of the hat, for the top part of it. Um, it'll kind of become apparent why you do that with layers, but it's, it's handy, like if you want to have a background colour, instead of having to draw right up to the edges of something, you can just literally have it behind, sitting behind the image, which is really handy and it's a real time saver so I'll go back onto the layer for the black for the hat. I'm putting in more of the hat buckle, putting in a few little details. I think I'd mess around with the hat buckle, the actual gold part of it for ages and it comes to naught it's crap. Um, I'm not using a reference for like the shine and stuff which I probably should which I usually do something important. So I, what I did there was I um, selected the inside of the area so I can really quickly colour in that spot. It's a block, so it's a simple shape so I can just isolate that one little section and colour it in. Which is another really handy tool. So this is me kind of coming up with the colour scheme for the buckle at the front. And this is a very top layer. So it's in front of everything. See me messing around with this now for ages, and it's basically mediocre at best. It's crap, really. My own worst critic. I'm kind of messing around, figuring out what colours to use. The colour select tool is very handy. So I skip forward a little bit again. Move back onto the hat. So I'm going back to the, the layer of the brown kind of part, top of the hat. I selected that with the selection tool and I'm just 
clanging. That selection tool is the job. Sometimes you forget to cycle to to, a, to the right layer. You'll be stuck on a layer. That's important. Like, so I'm going back to the kind of the main dark layer, black layer, for all the eyes and the, a lot of the hat. Tension. Where I intend to put the the hair and stuff. So this is sped up twice the speed, it's a little bit quicker, but you get the general idea. It's a lot slower than a time lapse. See there's a bit of a difference in the side of the hair there now, the shape of it. Well I can see it. It's not a lot like, it doesn't really make a difference with something like this, especially for hair. But you know, if you're trying to do a perfect port or, um, portrait, it has to be exact. If I was doing it for a tattoo, I would um, I would use the reference and layer over the reference and just literally make a copy of it, an identical copy. I wouldn't worry about trying to sketch it identically. I'd literally either use Procreate or Photoshop or something like that to make the, a perfect representation of the stencil. But for something like this. You don't have to do that. Sometimes I just focus on the details of something and just do it start to finish, like the straw now. Looking at the shade in the straw. And again, I'm not trying to do perfect representation of it, but close enough to black straw. To where the light hits it is obviously going to be lighter. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead another little bit there now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I've got just more black done. Um, you can see here I'm gonna use the, the picker tool where you dip into a thing to get the color. See, I'm just stealing the color for that. And then using it directly for the color of the lips. Again, I don't know if I'd save the right layer, put it into a right layer, but the end of the world. So I kind of go over using that colour first and I probably dip in again now and take a different colour. That's another really handy tool especially if you're trying to do a colour portrait and a tattoo. You can kind of dip in and take all the main colours and just have a little colour palette next to your image so you know what colours to choose. Um, I've seen people do that before and I just thought whoa that's really handy. Sometimes it's difficult to see exactly what a colour is, so you can use this to digitally pick it up, steal it. Just going lighter there now, just using by eye instead of dipping in and stealing the colour. Or taking the colour, stealing is probably the wrong term. Oh yeah, that's where I realised I should have a new layer. So I'm doing a layer behind the black. So I can just block in light colours. So now I think I'm going to block in the flesh tone colour. I think. Do. See me, yeah, grabbing the flesh tone colour, the light part. Yeah, I go back to the skin layer. So you can see now it's behind. It's behind the black layer. So you don't have to worry about getting right up to the edges because it literally sits in behind it, which is very handy. It's handy for doing shadows, it's just handy for everything really. Time saver. I'm sure there's probably even better ways of doing it, but this is the way that I've figured it out. 
a lot of it is just trial and error as you go along. And the good thing about this is you can make as many errors as you want. I'm so used to using Procreate now that when I'm drawing on paper sometimes I'll, I'll do the action, like the double tap action to delete something or zooming in and zooming out on something but I <laughs> try and zoom in and zoom out on paper. See, you know, I'm stealing such the shade for underneath her neck. So I'm kind of messing around now with the um, the neck again. Just putting in more details in the neck area. This is sped up like twice the speed, but, but you know, this, these kind of things are slow and maybe they're way quicker if you're more adept at using Procreate and the iPad, but I don't use a, a, a massive amount for this kind of illustration or drawing, but I do use it sometimes. I, the more I use it, obviously, the better I get, the quicker I get. Um, after dipping in there now and after getting a colour for underneath her lip. I dipped into the, the colour of the actual reference image and I'm using that to shade underneath her lip and her chin. So I'm kind of moving on now to more details kind of around her mouth and I suppose probably I move on to her eyes and stuff if I remember correctly. I'm doing a bit of shadow to the hat. Yeah, I'm very eyes and the nose and stuff. Again, just kind of lightly blocking in. You can see on my, um, to the left of the screen, you can see there's two different bars, ones that slide up and down. The one at the bottom is for the opacity of the, the pen you're using. And then the, the top is for the size of the pen. See, I'm dipping into the nose colour there now and taking the nose colour. I've changed the size of the pen. And I have it on a kind of a medium opacity, so it's it's light. I'm not kind of going too heavy with it, so I can kind of slowly build it up if I want to. You can see me increasing and decreasing the size of the pen as I go along as well, depending on what I'm actually doing. This is the kind of thing where I, I mess around with the opacity when you're doing this kind of stuff because this is the, I think, personally, I think this is the hard part, getting used to that kind of blending colours over on top of each other and stuff. So I, I try and go for light opacity so I can kind of lightly brush the colour on top, you know, just get used to doing things like that. But this is all, it's all trial and error, like you just keep on going with it and figuring it out as you go along. The beauty of being able to zoom in and really see what's going on with things as well, it's great. I stopped recording there for a while and I'm back now again. I think I had to go upstairs to my daughter, she was crying, she's in bed. She gets so mad at night time sometimes. Looking for her dummy, her dody. I'm kind of editing out some of the stops. There's, a, you know, I stop along the way because I can take a break or have a cup of tea. Some of this stuff, I'm rewatching this. I'm like doing a voiceover after the fact the next morning. So I'm kind of figuring out while watching it what I was actually doing at the time. Sometimes I'm kind of zooming in and zooming out and figuring out, okay, what, what am I doing here? What am I doing there? What will I actually do? Okay, I took a bit of colour from the ear there. 
and make the pen a bit smaller, the opacity a little bit um, higher. I'm working on the ear, the details in the ear. Look for a slightly darker colour for behind the eyebrows now. I kind of bounce around a lot of the time when I'm drawing things. Bounce around from section to section because I can kind of get bored with the section so I move on to another section and I come back to it. I try not to do that in tattooing as much as possible because you know you're going to hurt your client if you keep bouncing around over and back to the same thing so I try to finish sections as I go along but that's not always the case. I don't know. Sometimes you just can't and sometimes I have to trick myself because you sometimes you kind of you can lose concentration if you be if you if you uh, I wouldn't say get bored, but you know your concentration wanes, so you kind of move into a slightly different section for a while and come back to it. And I do this, you can see it, it's really evident here. And I kind of just bounce around and things like, oh, I'll do some shading up here and come back to that thing in a minute. And a lot of the time I'll zoom out to look at the, the reference next to the image that I'm drawing, just to see, is it right, is it close to it? You can see me there doing that, and I'm really looking at something just for a reference. And zooming back in. That's the only, I would say, negative with having, a, I've got a, like a relatively small iPad, it's like a, the 9.5 inch, I think, screen. If it was bigger, if it was an A4 size, like a 12 inch, I could probably leave the screen zoomed out and still work away fairly handy on the image but I prefer to zoom in for a lot of the stuff so you know you have to keep zooming in and zooming out to see the reference image. I could have the reference image elsewhere like on my phone or print it out as well or have it on a computer in front of me a different screen like but um, for something like this I can just zoom in and zoom out. Like I said I'm, I'm drawing this I'm sitting on the couch watching TV or have TV on kind of peripherally watching the telly. Blocking in more black there now. Yeah, so I'm working away now on just more eyes, nose, around the eyes, shading in the nose and stuff. I'll be zooming in and zooming out and changing the size of the pain as I go along and the opacity and or opacity. Um just concentrating on details. Little tiny details like some of them you kind of make up as you go along, some of them you don't. Like in a minute here now, you'll see I decided to give her freckles just because I thought they were cool. Shadows in the eye, you know. If I was working really hard on this now, I'd really, really focus on sharpening everything up. Like when you look when you zoom in on the eyes there now, like they're pretty rough. They're, they're not really honed. But if I was really focusing on it, I'd take ages to do it. Like this is, despite this taking quite a long time, it's nowhere near how long it would take me if I was really trying to, really trying to detail it properly. I'm putting in like shine in the eyes now. This is a classic example of me finishing a section because, not because I get bored, but because it's kind of like a little reward as you go along. 
I discovered that from being tattooed by this guy who did my arm over in um, Holland, Marcus Leonard is his name. He kind of fix, he finishes section by section and he was saying, if, if my memory serves me correctly, he was saying it's kind of rewarding to see a little section done and you move on to the next section. Some people kind of finish layer by layer, like don't finish section by section and yeah, you can do that too, but for my kind of ADD brain, I prefer to finish section by section sometimes. That's why the lips are kind of finished and the straw is kind of finished, just to see little sections that are done. It's kind of like a little mini reward as you go along. Now you can see I'm going to start blocking in more hair. I'm putting in more hair details and I switch to like a hair. There's like a loads of these different cool brushes but one of them gives like a hair effect and it's just handy. Really handy actually. You can kind of see me zooming in and zooming out now and putting in blocks of hair and then lighter lines and thin lines. Kind of seeing where the hair falls. All these little details make loads of difference. See them going in there. It's the little things like this that really add to an image. I find anyway. Probably see me switch to the hair brush now in a sec. See flowing hair. It's a handy one. You could argue that it's cheating kind of is but it's the beauty of digital you can have these cool tools you can download loads of different tools and brushes for for drawing digitally some of them i think are kind of taken to piss like some of them are finished images so you're not like there's tattoo artists out there who sell these brushes in inverted commas of like skulls and images and some of them are cool and they, don't get me wrong they're brilliant but if you're relying completely on them for drawing your, your designs and stuff, I just think you get lazy. You're better off figuring out how to draw something yourself, I think, personally. I mean, it's good to use as an aid to help, help while you move along, but don't completely rely on it and lean on it. Because if you do, I think your, your abilities will suffer in the long run. That's why I, I don't draw solely digitally here, I don't, you know, I... I I bounce around between different things because I think if you rely heavily on the iPad you could nearly forget how to draw properly. You could nearly forget a lot of stuff. Like I'll do a lot of freehand tattooing just using markers and stuff. Sometimes because I haven't done a reference image or I haven't done my homework. But mostly it's because it's nice for the flow of the body and it's nice to actually draw use some markers, use some pins, do some actual drawing. Kind of taking out some of the hairs there now again because it looks like they didn't work properly so I removed them. I'm putting in lighter. This is now where the hair thing really comes into its own. It's kind of cool. You sit the light colours over the top. You layer. I was putting that back on top of the dark layer. here now again trying to make them look a little bit more like the lips of the reference image shape wise to give the effect that she's actually sucking on the straw a little bit more anyway even though I don't think I nailed it really to be honest Maybe even on the finished image it doesn't look exactly the same it's probably to do with lightness and stuff there's, you know, there's a lot of Factors involved. If I was doing it as a tattoo now, I'd have to really, really focus on it and zoom in on it more. 
warming up the cheeks now on the nose, giving the nose kind of a red tint. I've seen that in loads of illustrations, cartoony kind of drawings where they, they, they make the nose really stand out in colour. Really kind of red or pink or something and I just think it looks cool. So I'm doing that and I give her more hue in her cheeks as well. Warmer, pinkier. At this point now I'm kind of just trying to add in more detail as I go along. I could really go back into an image and keep going with it for, Jesus, for ages. Like I was saying, it's never finished until you fuck it up. Even though the beauty of digital is, if you do, you can go back and fix it. Whereas, you know, if it's a drawing, or especially a tattoo, there's not margin for, there's not that much margin for error. That's another good thing I like about doing digital drawing is, it kind of takes the pressure off. You can mess around and there's no consequences. You just go back, cycle back, remove it, or just start again. Now there's, she doesn't have eyelashes properly that are prominent in the reference image, but I said feck it. I've got to tell on it and throw a few eyelashes in there. faster twice the speed so some of the stuff I'm missing myself but I'm kind of oh yeah I'm just working over the tops of the lips now I'm just basically working out I'm zooming out looking at details and zooming back in them to, to put them in there various different things but you can see that it does have an effect it does actually make a difference and some of it I mess up and I go back or some of it I keep going with some of it I overdo, like the shade there now between her her nose, like around her eyes and her nose, the shading there. It's kind of like where the sockets are. It's not right really. It's too deep. It's too much, too pronounced. And now I'm going, putting in some more shadow. Again, I'm, I'm, Sometimes I just add limit and just add in extra shadow and make it a bit more dramatic and stuff. You kind of bounce between trying to represent it accurately and then trying to do my own thing. Two more hair details there now. I skip forward a little bit there because I was just putting in lots of hair details. Now I put in a new layer, as you can see me opening it, layer seven, and I'm putting it behind layer six, so it sits in the background. And I'm changing to a really bright green as a background color. Let me get it on the palette there. I really, see the way it sits in behind there now, that's really handy. Otherwise you'd have to kind of go right up to where the hair is and stuff. I'm just putting this really vibrant color into the background. layer at the top now and I am going doing I bet you I'm probably going to do I don't know Let's see oh I'd say probably the smoky the smoky section yeah I'm gonna mess around with this for a while in, kind of quickly trying it in. Some of it I'm going to put in the foreground, some of it in the background. 
some of it like slightly over her hat, some of it behind her hat, having her hair peek out of it and stuff. All of those little things I think make kind of a difference. Like if you go online and go on Instagram and etc, you're gonna see like the most advanced class, amazing digital drawing. Like this isn't a patch on any of that, but I suppose it's kind of a good idea as to how you could begin with something like this. And like I started with something much more simple than this kind of stuff, but kind of getting there with it, I think. I don't have that much time to do it very often because I've got a job tattooing when there isn't a pandemic I have you know full time job and a wife and children that I also spend a lot of time with but if I get a chance see me blocking in big massive swathes of colour swathe swaths I don't know how to pronounce it skip forward a little bit there now. So I skip forward a little bit you can see that I just blocked in some more green. Now I'm going back into the black layer which is behind that pale green. I'm just filling it out more. certain parts of it. On both sides there you can see I'm doing that. sketchy red pen layer in the background to get rid of that. I'm just doing more of that green stuff now. Smoky effect. That's going to be more detailed as I go along. Go back into the hair now again for a while. And I know I come back to the chin, the jolly kind of cheeks, cheeks area quite a bit because I know I didn't get it right. I'm working on the, the jar now. I could have put a lot more work into the jar really, to be honest, it's a bit messy and it's a bit misshapen, but I just, I was getting tired then. Like ordinarily, if I was really putting time into it, I'd probably just have stopped and picked it up again later on, but I knew that it wasn't good, it wasn't for anything in particular, so I was like, I'll just keep going with it. So I'm going back to the kind of neck, chin area there now again, bouncing around between things. See me opening a new layer there now, and I'm doing the rest of the hat starting it at least. I can't remember it. I, I probably started it and then went away from it went back to it again. Knowing me. So, just doing a kind of a messy old one for a layer at the front as well. So it's in front of the smoky effect. Just blocking in that whole section. Accidentally fill the whole screen there. So I'm just filling in the hat, filling in the top of the hat, 
seem to be messing around with this belt buckle area again. That belt buckle is the bane of my life. There's always one thing at least in, in an image that you're drawing that you're looking at going, ugh, I did that wrong. For me anyway. Looking at it going, oh god, it's plaguing me. So I'm just lightening this upward. Light one here. Again, this isn't bang on accurate as to what it would actually look like. In real life, just kind of doing an approximation. Kind of a cartoonish version. If I was worried about how it would really look, I'd probably look for more reference images and stuff. Skip forward a little bit here, kind of in the foreground and in the background, so it's in front of the clouds in this part. It makes a big difference, I think. You can see it's the top layer, layer seven. Now I'm working on the jar again. I decided to go for a stereotypical red jar and I mess around for ages I think with, uh, with the shade and stuff and the light and stuff and but I try and figure out what I'm going to write on the jar you can see it takes me ages to figure out what to do again I didn't put too much time into the jar to be honest I should have put more time into it but I got lazy switching to a different layer here now again Oh yeah, this is like the, the shading on the jar. I put it as a different layer so that I don't have to go back the wind. That's another good thing about layers is if you're, you're kind of tentative about something that you're doing in a section, just save, put, put a new layer over it and do that. And if it's crap, then you can just delete that layer and start again. Whereas if, uh, rubbing out and going backwards is, I mean, you could do that too, but I think it's just handy to have a different layer saved. Probably, you can see the details kind of emerging there now as I'm going along, kind of going in and going back out, looking at the jar. And, and again, I'm only doing that kind of a, an approximation of it. I'm not trying to do it bang on. on this because I, I actually want to look at the jar for reference. Now I'm putting in some white for shine which makes all the difference in something like that. Really you see it kind of come to life a bit more. I'm going to figure out how to speed stuff up instead of having to skip from section to section my next tutorial video. I'm also going to do a tutorial video of drawing appropriate markers or pro markers. Appropriate markers. With pro markers, they're Windsor Newton pro markers. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial for that as well. This is literally the first proper tutorial video I've ever done so please bear with me. Still trying to figure out what, how to do it effectively and make it as unboring as possible or interesting unboring interesting unboring is a more interesting word but it's wrong I'm putting in light lines there now for hair I think oh no I'm back to the chair yeah I was kind of not happy with the chair really and I was like ah oh, fuck it I'm not going to it too much, just put a sheen in there, the grand. Put in more 
between. So I'm saving, an, oh yeah, I'm, I'm starting another layer there now I think for drawing. Oh yeah, I'm going on the red layer. Underneath the shine, the white shine layer. I'm gonna do my writing there so that the shine still sits on top of the writing of the text that I'm trying to do. And I came up, I was trying to think of a few different things I wanted it to be blood, so I was gonna do O negative, which I didn't Google to see, is it like, how do you write it? Is, is, is there like a symbol for it or something, or is it just O negative? I started writing that, and I decided, nah, that doesn't look good enough. I thought the O negative was crap, so I, I skipped forward there, but uh, I, then I tried, I was going to do souls, like drinking souls out of a jar, and then I was, you can see here, they was like, nah, that's crap as well. And then I decided to go for blood, I went to a brush pen, and then I was, it was on the B, I was like, nah, it's going to look shit. Then I decided to go for eyes. Which wouldn't make sense in a red jar, I suppose. It could be blood from the eyes. Even though the red jar doesn't make sense either, it would be a jar with some blood in it. You know, like a clear jar with some blood in it. But at this point I was just like, yeah, I'll just do something. So I started on eyes. I gotta do a tutorial about script. This is messy script here now that I'm doing, but about lettering like. Um, I'll probably do that with markers as opposed to on Procreate, because it's how I find it really difficult on Procreate. So I got sick of that, I was like, no, that's not gonna work. So I moved on to a good old fashioned pentagram. A nice bit of Satanism there for you. The cool thing about that circular uh, tool there is I drew a circle and then if you hold down the pen, it refines the circle and turns it into a, a proper circle. You can do the same with drawing straight lines. If you just draw a straight line and hold the pen, it'll turn the line into a straight line, which you can manipulate and move. It's very, very handy for specific things that you're trying to do but it would, it would it can make you lazy too things like that um so what i moved on to now oh yes they're moving on to detail more details around the clouds i think lightning stuff up let's see me making the brush bigger there now i'm putting in more background Putting in drop shadow for the straw, which isn't in the reference image, but I just love those little shadows. Probably totally unnecessary, like, but I just liked it. I like it. I'm putting in clouds, you know, more light color green over the clouds. Make it a bit more fluffy. Just add another layer of color. <coughs> Excuse me. Add another layer of colour onto it. You can see that kind of building up there. It gives it a nice, like that's the beauty of digital, like it's cool, airy, airbrushy kind of a look. Which, you know, I'm sure you can do with airbrushes as well, but this is a cheap, relatively easy, cheap way of doing it. Once you have your iPad, you're away in a heck. See me saving all the layers down there now, just combining all the layers. I think I go back again for a while. Yeah, kind of. Because I wanted to do some more in the background there. I wanted to put a slightly different tone in the background. The really uh, vibrant green. I wanted to do a little bit more to it. Which you can see me doing. And then I probably combine the layers completely. So you can combine all the layers down to just have one image then and then you know if you want you could build more layers on top of that but I usually do that at the end. You don't have to do that either, you can just save it. But uh, I like to do it.
um, and gone back into the details on our cheeks now and stuff kind of trying to make it a little bit closer because I thought it was a bit too wide just not the right shape I don't know if I recorded but I used a smudge tool as well you can use like there's a smudge tool which is brilliant you literally can smudge the edges or something or just smudge a colour into another colour and stuff which is a class thing to have really soften the edges of stuff and stuff You can see the neck underneath the chin is quite rough. I don't know if I refined that properly or not. I did a little bit, but still ended up quite rough. Working on the ear there now, I think, bringing it down, bring it back into shadow a little bit more. Do I have another go at the buckle? I deleted it, but I did a fucking ton of work on the buckle there for about 10 or 15 minutes and just crap. I, just, I really should have used the reference for the buckle, but I didn't. That buckle. There I am toiling away that stupid buckle. Put another layer on top, bright yellow, for more, oh, what am I doing here now? I think I was trying to figure out a, a border colour to go around to brighten it up. Oh yeah, and then I switch to like a, the luminescence luminescent um, pen which is very cool some really cool effects with the luminescence pen you'll see me selecting it there now in a sec yeah look at that light pen light brush I'm make a small light brush it's just a cool effect that you could probably do I could probably recreate it without that pen by doing white and then having that colour in the background but obviously this is a wonderful shortcut and something like that another really good benefit of digital drawing and this is another thing that I've spotted in tattoo like Victor Chill now and Jamie Riss and loads of these new school tattooers they love doing these bright kind of borders bright surrounds to make things pop out they always just cut my eye. Like, do them loads. I probably do them wrong a lot of the time. I probably don't do them in the right place, but I just love doing them, so I do them. <sighs> yeah, this is just me putting in fun details now. I'm messing around with the luminescence thing again, I think. There's like pulse light and there's all sorts of mad jokes. See me messing around with it, I think, with the clouds that's coming up there now. Seeing what it looks like in the clouds. I don't know, did I leave it? I actually can't remember at this point, did I leave it in? I think I may have, I think I did. Just make the clouds pop even more. Or smoke. Clouds? Smoke? They look more like clouds to me. this point now it's late and I'm tired and I'm thinking right I'm just going to finish it now like if I was trying really hard now I'd probably be able to do like a light bouncing off the skin and stuff like kind of a green light or something bouncing off the hat and the skin if I tried really hard but I'd say at that stage now I was tired 
and I tried darkening the nostrils and stuff as well underneath and it didn't look right so I'm back again. So towards the end of it then I um, was just messing around with different ideas like darkening around her eyes to see could I make her look more ghoulish and stuff but I kind of committed to the cute thing then at this stage so I tried it and yeah, I didn't like it. But I did go for the classic bit of blood dripping down. I used kind of the, the blood drip tool first and it didn't look great. It was like a blood splash, or not, not necessarily blood splash, it's a splash tool that doesn't, it, it just didn't work on this. So I think I'm nearly done with the, the tutorial. I probably put in some luminescence pins and light kind of yokies for like a shine in the buckle and you can see me switching, yeah, to like a flare. Yeah, flare. I made a big huge one that I made it smaller because it was too big. Yeah, like that little thing, that's class. Um, and then those broken is a boat? I don't know what it's called, but a kind of. Let's see what, what I'm doing here now again. I think I go back to. Yeah, that kind of bally light kind of a thing. It just gives it a dreamy effect. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm nearly done with it, really. Um, you can see me there now, just putting in the light effect and stuff. So, thanks very much if you watched this whole thing or some of it let me know if you liked it um, comments or whatever be great I think I'll do another one 